Hello, my name is Mimi and I'm an Australian illustrator. Today is a special day because it's the one year anniversary of my daily creating challenge where I committed to drawing something every weekday, Monday to Friday, to improve my art skills. I've been posting all of my art on Instagram since the beginning so that I could share my creative journey with people like you and I don't think I would have made it to the one year mark without the support of my wonderful art community. I'm going for a stroll down memory lane and looking back over my illustrations from the past 12 months. Let's take a look at what impact drawing nearly every day for a year had on my creative style, starting with colour pencils on paper and making my way to digital drawing. So I sat down with my boyfriend and had a chat to him about my journey so far, starting on the 18th of May 2020. So let's get into it. I didn't know at the time I drew this one that it was going to be the first in a long line of drawings. It wasn't actually until the next day that I decided that, yeah, this is something I want to commit to doing and this is something that I want to build my skills in because I love to draw and I just don't ever commit time to it. The first character I did was my profile picture. Super simple character, really round head, really like blobby hair. There's not a lot of definition going on. It's not a lot of contrast, but I do like the colors and I really like her cheeks and she looks super happy. From the beginning, I was giving everything little blushing cheeks and little happy faces. And these faces are quite similar to what I do now. They're definitely a direct ancestor to my current characters. This one is the first Draw This In Your Style challenge that I participated in. And I found that Draw This In Your Style challenge is really helpful when I was intimidated to draw characters. I really like this little guy, these, this little duo. You'll notice this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. His mouth is just floating between his eyes, but I thought his, his mouth can't be down here on the shell, but he has to be smiling. So I just threw caution to the wind and gave him a floating mouth. I think it doesn't really matter. I think you can just get away with whatever you want. It's my art. No one's gonna tell me off for defying the laws of physics. So I really was trying to incorporate some relationships in this art here with duos or friends. You can see already my hair is starting to get a little bit more defined here. I've got a bit more movement in this hair. There's, two, there's a back to it and a front to it. I'm starting to get some patterns in my clothing and some sparkly bits and a bit more of a stronger composition. My style progression will come and go. It's not a, a linear progress. It's actually really like this illustration. I think it's super cute. It's super simple. She doesn't have any toes, but it, or fingers, but it doesn't matter. Her hair is quite simple, but it has some definition in it. And I think the contrast is getting better in my illustrations and my color choices as well. I'd say that I'm starting to get a bit bolder through here and I'm starting to define my color palette a bit better because I've got a lot of these oranges and this kind of teal blue color that I'm repeating. I'm kind of trying to go back to the same colored pencils again and again. It's quite an easy way to make your your style look cohesive is if you're using similar colors. You can see I still don't have my proportions like right. Her arm is super long. If she put her arm out straight, it would probably come down to like her knees, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's still quite suggestive, but I've got lots of plant elements coming through some little kind of sparkly bits around the sides, a bit more personality in her character. She's got a more interesting shirt on. She's got hair that's now blowing in the wind a little bit and more of an environment that isn't just a solid chunk behind her. Around here, I was using watercolor to give a little bit more vibrancy to my illustrations. I was struggling to get the saturation and the depth that I wanted with my colored pencils on paper. And so I found that having some watercolor layers and then drawing colored pencil on top gave me a much stronger drawing and I really liked how that looked. Now using a different medium kind of gives you a different perspective on your art and kind of forces you to do different things. Watercolor is quite washy, it's kind of got a mind of its own. So it, I was adapting my shapes and my drawing to that. This girl is super cute. She's got big, vibrant hair, really cute dress, little feet, and I like that she's standing in this environment. And I like that she's got a little friend. I'm bringing in a lot of characters' friendships and trying to tell a little bit of story in my art. I've got some shading in this hair where it's getting darker toward her face and lighter coming away. Some of these illustrations through here, I actually started editing digitally like this one. So I was already photographing them for Instagram and maybe adjusting the lighting. But then I, I wanted some more contrast or vibrancy or I wanted to adjust details. So I was actually in Photoshop with a digital art brush going over some of these edges to make them bolder or introduce another color. And so a lot of these outlines are strengthened in Photoshop. 
this is a draw list in your style where I'm starting to learn that oh I can make hair defy gravity and it looks cool and I can make hair big and clothes big and interesting and my characters don't have to look face on so challenges like this really taught me a lot about making interesting compositions and characters and not necessarily going with the most obvious choice. I kind of come and go a little bit from watercolour through here, watercolour, pencil and illustration with some digital elements on top of a lot of them, I'm just kind of enhancing them with digital brushes. I'm getting more movement in my illustrations now too, where I'm introducing an environment that has maybe wind like this one. I still don't have hands and I'm now starting to get noses though, so one thing at a time my characters are coming together. Within these few illustrations here, I pivot from drawing traditionally to drawing digitally. I'd say this is one of the last ones that I drew with pencil first and then drew with digital brushes. You can see how digital a lot of these brush strokes are. So this is the first illustration that I did completely digitally, completely in Photoshop. It's almost four months in. I had filled out my sketchbook, so I thought, well, I'll just draw this completely in Photoshop and see how I go. And maybe that was just the kick up the bum that I needed to take the leap because it's, it's intimidating to open a blank canvas and not really know where to start. It's a simple character. The background's quite simple. I've got some outlines still going on and they're kind of like training wheels in some ways because it makes it easier. The simplified version of what I draw now. This is the second Draw This In Your Style challenge I hosted. I was just over four months in to drawing almost every day. I now had 750 followers. It seemed kind of crazy to me that 750 people wanted to see what I was drawing. So I had this character who I actually really like. I really like her hair and her hat. It's got a lot of contrast to it. Her face is quite small and tiny. Actually, now I look at it. But I like a little background I've got behind her. I like a little outfit. So these drawings are much more vibrant because they're fully digital, but my skills weren't strong in Photoshop. You've still got quite a few of the pencil techniques coming through and there's still a lot of outlines in my illustrations, but I do really like this one. I think it's really cute. I'm drawing quite a lot of animals and flowers here, which the actual subjects that I'm drawing through here are pretty much the same as what I draw now. People, cats, bunnies, flowers. And these faces are pretty much how I draw them now. The difference with these faces is super subtle than how they were much earlier on, but basically the eyes are almost in line with the mouth. Whereas earlier on, the mouth's a little lower down because you'd think that makes sense. But to have a face that looks super chuffed, this mouth wants to be in line with or almost in line with the eyes. So it's lots of happy faces. Everything's pretty much a character these days. I'm using more vibrant colors. I haven't settled down into a color palette yet. In here I've started to play with this te the texture brushes that I have because you can see some of the actual texture coming through rather than being a more solid block. I'm starting to understand how to use texture brushes through here. I've sometimes got my outlines offset here which is kind of one of those happy accidents that you do accidentally once or twice and you go you know what that actually looks kind of cool and you keep it in. If I do have a outline now I'm probably going to offset it because it looks more intentional. Through here, I'm starting to actually remove my outlines. But you can see I'm now just using natural lighting, shading and tonal contrast to imply where the edges of shapes are rather than having to actually physically outline with a dark brush where everything ends. I really like these guys. I don't know why, I just think they're super cute. And it's funny because they're upside down, they're all cozy. I've got a few love hearts here. I use this quite a lot now when I've got multiple characters to kind of just show that they all love each other. They're just happy to be together. Look how stoked they are. I think this girl is the first one that I drew without outlines. She's also got hands, which is a huge progression for me and for her anatomically. I like that I'm introducing details into the clothing. So overall, there's a lot of simplicity in this drawing, but some elements like the hair and the shirt and the spider are more detailed. Around here is where I started alternating my feed to be illustrations that are framed to illustrations that are not framed or not framed in a square. This is the third Draw This In Your Style I did, which is six months in and for 1,500 followers. So this one was Christmassy themed. I do like this girl. I think her hair is quite cool. 
As a silhouette, her shape is more interesting and much more developed than characters before. I've got these like individual strands coming out now and around, which is an, an extra element of detail. Even her jumper's got some texture on it. She's got fingers that are foreshortened of all things. I would never have tried to tackle even a month before this. I've got a lot of these botanical background leaves going on through here. I'm starting to understand how to use my texture brushes to create broad shading that doesn't just end abruptly. I also really like this cat, he's cute. This is the first commission I ever did. Someone contacted me to draw this beautiful dog. It's probably the most fulfilling drawings I do are drawings of other people or for other people because they've got a real life impact and they're a really great challenge kind of trying to be more consistent with my color palette here using similar colors in a row so they look quite consistent my feed so this one in particular does really well but the actual i don't love this illustration actually as a character and my execution of it i don't love it the hands are super basic and almost don't make sense and I think the pencil lines through here are too thin on the features of the face but it's very bold and if you look at it on a feed it does stand out and I think that did help it do well. So this is my fourth Draw in Your Style challenge that I host. It's for 4,000 followers and I think there's just such a progression in this character than my first Draw This In Your Style challenge that I hosted. I really like the colours in this, they're much softer. I like the way I've done her hair. The shading is much stronger than it used to be and I'm also now putting a gradient through my character's hair so it goes really quite dark to quite light. This one is super cute and did really well. Again, cat and girl winning combination. I would say that this illustration is the culmination of everything that I've learned so far and from here on out I kind of use all these elements and just this this is not dissimilar to my current style at all and this is from January. It just cracks me up. I actually really like the colours in it too. I hadn't really used a lot of purple but it's just the perfect combination of baked goods, flowers and cats and all these little strawberries and these little tongues. I love it. I really like the hair on this girl. This is me putting an effort into improving the hair and adding some highlights and some layers to the hair, some different areas to it, and having an interesting silhouette. My color palette really gets quite controlled here. My backgrounds, my botanical framing here is becoming much more detailed and I've got different layers to it. I'm experimenting more with my plants too, whether these plants are kind of new with these little seedy flowery pods on top. But you can see the face is pretty much unchanged from earlier drawings. I was trying to characterize animals through here. So like this little bunny collecting flowers, he's more of like a personified bunny. He's got a people hat on and he's kind of walking like a person. This is Party Goose. I really enjoy Party Goose and the confetti. I don't know why it took me what 11 months to draw confetti in an illustration considering all the sparkles I draw and I'm absolutely going to draw more confetti from now on. So this is my most recent draw this in your style from the 11 month mark of my art journey and the hair has improved a lot. I've got highlights in my hair now. I've not only got shading but these lighter bits. I'm trying to show some wrapping kind of direction around the hair rather than strands coming straight down. I'm trying to wrap them around the sides to show a little bit more movement. My forest scenes are getting better now and are becoming more a part of my style. So all of these plants in this illustration, every level, apart from the deep background, even that has a gradient on it, but every level through here has some kind of detail, spots, stripes, lines, leaves, something on it that gives it a bit more of a story. I really like how these flowers turned out. I really like how the texture and the shading worked on these. I found a purple that I really liked and purple's not really a color that I generally go for. I try not to have too many elements that are just flat. Even these foregrounded plants go slightly from lighter to darker and they've all got little detail lines on them as well. So that's something I'm really is really key in my style these days. But then as well, still using the same sparkles I was using what, six months ago or nine months ago. If I like the way it looks, then I'll just keep it as it is. It's so crazy to me to see this illustration in relation to my drawings from a year ago because it's the culmination of everything I've learned this year and it's really nice to see how my style has progressed.
Practice really is the best way to learn and I don't intend to stop practicing my art anytime soon. The next thing I want to focus on improving is the style of my character faces and I'm super curious to see where another year of drawing practice will take me. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at my creative journey so far. I'll leave my Instagram details in the description and I've also got another video coming out really soon about how I grew my audience on Instagram this past year. So if you're interested in the social media strategy side of things, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss it. See you next time.